their nervous system is nothing but made up of paired ganglia which are connected by lot of lateral nerves from the side and all these nerves finally end up to in a double ventral nerve cord terrestrial analyst don't mark it as parapodia it will become wrong because parapodia are present in aquatic analysts not in terrestrial analysts that is not a characteristic feature of analyst so therefore the answer here is visceral hum is not a characteristic feature because all the other three are the characteristic feature Hello everyone a warm welcome to the session on class 11th biology for CBSE I'm Dr Divya biology faculty with Yashram School of Excellence Mysore so in this session let us learn about phylum annelida under animal kingdom that is chapter 4 so we shall learn the characteristics of phylum annelida and then move on to understanding some of the mcqs that can be framed around this particular topic so annelids the name says annelids where an annulus meaning little ring so it is a latin word that is annulus why it is called as annelids is because if you look at the body they are segmented wherein the segment looks like as if it is small rings on the body of that particular organism so they have given the name as ringworm also to these particular organisms for example earthworm earthworm is one of the best example that we can take for annelids they have segments and talking about the habitat they are aquatic wherein they can live in marine habitat that is seas and oceans and in fresh water such as ponds rivers lakes etc and some of them can be terrestrial as well so terrestrial earthworms leech all that are terrestrial aquatic it is nereids nereids is one of the best example for an aquatic annelid they can be free living and some are parasitic sometimes they are parasitic meaning they depend on a living host for the survival for example leeches can be considered to some extent as parasitic because they depend on the blood of other living animals for the survival so that is how they are parasitic sometimes and talking about the level of body organization they have organ system level of body organization wherein they have a specialized organ system for excretion for example they have nephridia which helps in the process of excretion so therefore they have an organ system level of organization and their arrangement of cells triploblastic wherein the cells are arranged in three embryonic layers that is an outer ectoderm and inner endoderm and between the ectoderm and the endoderm there is one more layer of cells that are present which is called as the mesoderm meso means middle ecto means outside endo means inside so hence it is triploblastic cell arrangement and do they have a body cavity yes they have a body cavity that is why they are coelomates so here you can see the diagram of nereids which is an aquatic annelid and uh, this is how it looks so it all almost looks like a millipede or a centipede but this is not that it is nereids so next moving on to the structure so they are bilaterally symmetrical bilateral symmetry means when i draw a line say for example here itself you can see there is a line already in the center so i draw a line exactly in the center like this this half is similar to the other half of the body right they are like mirror images of each other so therefore they are bilaterally symmetrical and they are metamerically segmented do they have segments yes they have segments they are segmented what type of segmentation metameric segmentation so metamerism means this is one of the important point that you have to remember because the question comes up in the exam most often what is metamerism give an example for an organism that exhibits metamerism or it can come for mcqs also as a one mark or a two mark this question can be asked so metamerism is nothing but wherein in some of the segments continuously the organs will be divided or distributed say for example if we take a leech and if we dissect the leech and open it you can see in some of the segments continuously there is distribution of nephridia so say for example up to 10 segments if they have nephridia then they'll have 10 nephridias in their body that is repetition of organs is there in each segment continuously or in a serial order so that is called as metamerism and apart from that some of the annelids which are terrestrial for example earthworm leech do they have feet to move from one place to another or do they have limbs 
No, right? So, what, how exactly do they move? So, they have longitudinal and circular muscles in the body which actually helps in locomotion. So, say for example, this is a leech. This is how it moves, right? So, it just like a spring. So, when you press the spring and leave it, the spring moves to a certain distance, right? Same way here also. It is just like a spring. The muscles contract, the circular and longitudinal muscles contract. And when it relaxes, the organism moves with contraction, relaxation, with contraction, relaxation. So, that is how they crawl and creep. So, that is uh, in the case of terrestrial organism. Now, what about the aquatic ones like Neri's? So, aquatic ones, they have lateral appendages. That is at the side of their body, if you can see, these are the appendages that they have. Appendages are organs which help in movement. So, these appendages are nothing but called as parapodia. Podia means feet. So, they act like feet wherein using that they can wade in water or they can swim in the water. So, they have parapodia which help in swimming and not just that, they have a, these organisms. Enolids have a circulatory system wherein the circulatory system is a closed type of circulatory system. So, what is a closed type circulatory system? It is nothing but that is the heart pumps its blood through arteries, veins and capillaries to specific organs. So, that is closed type of circulatory system. And talking about the nephridia, that is, it is one of the excretory organ that is present in these organisms, that is nephridia. And this nephridia helps in the process of osmoregulation as well as eliminating waste from the body. And they have a neural system and the neural system is made up of paired ganglia, which are connected by lateral nerves to a double ventral nerve cord. Like how in our body we have a nervous system, right? The peripheral nervous system that is that comes from the side and the central nervous system that is a backbone, right? So all the peripheral nerves will be connected to the central nervous system. Likewise here, they have a paired, their nervous system is nothing but made up of paired ganglia, which are connected by lot of lateral nerves from the side. And all these nerves finally end up to in a double ventral nerve cord. So, they have a double ventral nerve cord to which all the nerves are connected. Next, reproduction. So, the reproduction in earthworm and leeches, they are monaceous. So, monaceous meaning they are hermaphrodites wherein both the male and the female reproductive organs are present in one individual organism itself. They don't have a separate male and a separate female. So, that is monaceous. Whereas Neris, which is an aquatic enolid that lives in water, they are, they are dioecious, meaning where male Neris is separate, female Neris is separate. And reproduction is sexual. So, meaning the sperm and the egg meet for fertilization and then the young ones develop. So, it is sexual reproduction. It's talking about some of the examples under this particular phylum Enolida. We have Neris, which is an aquatic enolid. What is their characteristic? They have parapodia, which is one of the important characteristics to distinguish Neris from other two enolids. That is uh, earthworm and leech. Earthworm, which is also called as ferretima. So, we have here earthworm, which is also called ferretima. Then leech. The blood sucking leech, which is also called as hirudinaria, and this is neris. So, these are the different examples. So, if you can see here in their entire body, they have segments. All of these have segments, right? You can see segments. So, segments are nothing but lines. So, in the entire body, so if I take an earthworm, so entire body it has round ring like structures or segments in the body. So, these are segments and what type of segmentation? Metamerism. So, this is about the analytes. So, now let us look into some of the MCQs that can be framed under this particular topic. So, analytes exhibit dash level of organization. Is it cellular tissue organ or organ system? So, they exhibit organ system level of organization wherein they have specific organs which perform which group together to perform a specific function. So, next question, dash are metamerically segmented. Is it ascalmins, platyhelmins, enolids or arthropods? No, ascalmins are round worms which do not have segments, platyhelmins flat worms which do not have segments, 
then comes arthropods they are the insects and then comes insects have segments but it is not metamerically segmented why means metameric segmentation means wherein the organs get repeated in the segments right so that is metameric segmentation so you can't choose arthropods here it is annelids which are metamerically segmented so you have to be very careful when you read the question who knows you might just uh, mark arthropods as the answer but arthropods are segmented only thing is they are not metamerically segmented next question the lateral appendages in nereids is called parapodia pseudopodia limbs and metameres pseudopodia no pseudopodia are the false feet that are present in amoeba right so it is not pseudopodia limbs no they do not have limbs limbs come under vertebrates rest of the organisms they don't have limbs next is metameres metameres is nothing but segmentation it has nothing to do with the appendages or the organs for movement so here the answer is parapodia that is nereids for example it has parapodia terrestrial annelids use dash for locomotion see how the question has been twisted right terrestrial now be very very careful here what did i ask the question terrestrial annelids don't mark it as parapodia it will become wrong because parapodia are present in aquatic annelids not in terrestrial annelids so terrestrial annelids use dash for locomotion is it parapodia no of course parapodia is present in annelids but is it present in terrestrial annelids no it's present in nereids which is an aquatic annelid so is it pseudopodia not again pseudopodia because i told you that is the false feet present in amoeba none of the above no that's also wrong so it is circular muscles so they have circular so as well as lateral muscles which actually help in the movement of terrestrial annelids next which one of the following is a characteristic feature of annelids pseudocoelomate no they're not pseudocoelomate because they are coelomates is it open circulatory system no because they have a closed circulatory system is it radial symmetry again no because they have a bilateral symmetry so what is the right answer it is metamerism because annelids exhibit metamerism or they can uh, give uh, like they can give other option and give it as the this option can be made coelomate this option can be made as closed circulatory system this as bilateral symmetry and they can give the option as all of the above then you have to choose all of the above because all other characteristics of annelids but in this case it is only metamerism that is the characteristic of annelids next leech belongs to the phylum ascalmens platyhelminths arthropoda annelida so leech belongs to annelida that is those organisms having rings or segments in the body so the next question excretory units of annelids are dash is it malpighian tubules no malpighian tubules are found in arthropods which are the insect so that is not the right answer is it flame cells no flame cells are found in platyhelminths that is the flatworms platyhelminths is it muscular pharynx no muscular pharynx is found in ascalmens that is round worms so therefore the right answer here is nephridia so nephridia is the excretory unit of annelids they help in osmoregulation as well as in excreting or eliminating waste from the body so they can uh, like ask there the osmoregulatory function in annelids is carried out by then also you have to write choose the answer is nephridia because nephridia comes under annelids next ferratima is commonly called as leech tapeworm ringworm earthworm now leech is called as hirudinaria it is called hirudinaria the question can come up like this also hirudinaria is also called as or leech is also called as like that they can frame the question tapeworm no tapeworm is tenia and it comes under platyhelminths that is flatworms ringworm no ringworm comes under uh, that is uh, ascalmens it comes under ascalmens that is roundworms the right answer here is earthworm earthworm is called as ferret tema next dash is not a characteristic feature of annelids is it nephridia uh, annelids have nephridia which is their excretory unit right which helps in osmoregulation and eliminating waste from the body so this is not the right answer because it is one of the characteristic feature is it paired ganglia 
yes they have a paired ganglia because in the nervous system they have the paired ganglia so this is not the right answer ventral nerve cord yes they have a ventral nerve cord to which all the lateral nerves are connected so this is also not the right answer it is the visceral hump because visceral hump you find it in mollusks that is in oysters, in octopus, they have visceral hump, that is in mollusks, phylum mollusca. So therefore, this is the right answer because be careful with the question, what did I ask you? Dash is not a characteristic. So if it was a characteristic, I would have put here D option as all of the above. Then you would have selected all of the above because all these three are the characteristics of analytes. But what was the question I framed here? Dash is not a characteristic feature of analytes. So therefore, the answer here is visceral hump is not a characteristic feature because all the other three are the characteristic feature. So option D is the right answer here. So option D is the right answer here. So this was about the session wherein we learned about phylum annelida, their characteristics and some of the examples. And also we came to know like in what way questions can appear in the form of MCQs for the final exam. So this was about the session. Hope you understood this session well. We shall meet again in the coming session wherein we'll discuss about the new topic and the MCQs under it. Thank you.